Science and art have a complicated relationship. Art inspires automotive design, and in turn, these designs inspire art. The two worlds are intertwined, but that begs the question, can cars be art? I'll be the first to admit, I don't know a lot about art. It's intimidating. You can find yourself way out of your depth if you don't know the context in which the piece was made. And that's not exclusive to fine art. That's music, film, sculpting, writing, high fashion, and episodes of Up to Speed. Defining art is something people have been trying to do for centuries, and depending on when you're from, you're gonna have a different idea of what it is. Until around the 18th century, artists were striving to represent what was real, and to do it in the most realistic way possible. They kind of perfected that, and the expressionist movement that followed was about expressing feelings, stuff that doesn't have a tangible representation. I bring that up because the expressionists felt art was anything created with the intent to make you feel. An idea a lot of people have is that art can't be practical, that it can't serve any other purpose other than itself. And since cars have a function, transportation, then it could be argued that they can't be art because of that. Art and design were considered two separate fields, but that all changed at this place, the Bauhaus School of Functional Design back in 1919 Germany. The Bauhaus believed in uniting art, design, and technology. They wanted creativity to go hand in hand with manufacturing. Bauhaus artists were afraid of art losing its place in society and sought to bring it back by making things you see every day beautiful. Take the ordinary wooden chair. Kind of boring, right? Well, the Bauhaus students thought so too. The wooden chair wasn't artful. It took craftsmanship to build, sure, but the end result existed just to be sat on. So the Bauhaus came up with the cantilever and Vasily chairs. You can sit on these too, but the design evoked a sense of modernity and progress. The Bauhaus made the chair say something. But this isn't about chairs, it's about cars. The first cars were not great looking, but as the car got more popular and became a status symbol, they needed to look good. And that's when the artistry came in. Just look at this 1932 Alfa Romeo 6C. It's got utilitarian fenders, headlights, and running boards that all serve a purpose, like the cars of the 1900s. But they're done in such a way where you think, damn, that's a good looking car. You can feel the passion put into building it, almost as if it was done by a Bauhaus artist. It wasn't, but you get the idea. If you have to have these features, you might as well make them look good. Fine art is a great comparison to the world of collector cars. People like Ralph Lauren and Jay Leno collect cars the same way people collect Monet or Goya paintings. Oh! These super valuable cars are highly collectible because like those paintings, these cars are exceedingly rare. Take Ralph Lauren's Bugatti Type 57 SC Atlantic a car he calls the most beautiful thing in the world. Only three or four of these things were ever built, depending on who you ask. And if Mr. Lauren ever decided to sell it, the Bugatti would probably go for around $50 million. But the Bugatti and other collector cars don't sell for millions just because they're rare or especially pretty. That's a big part of it, of course. But like the paintings, it's about who built the car and why that makes them so special. Cars like the 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO. It was designed to beat rivals like the Jaguar E-Type and Aston Martin DP212. To do that, its designers sculpted the body panels by hand and tested the shapes in a wind tunnel. The car was built by craftsmen with an expressed purpose to win. And it did, a bunch. The 250 GTO won its class at Le Mans twice in a row and racked up victories all over the world. It's a badass Ferrari built at the height of Ferrari's Ferrari-ness. It's basically their David. This particular 250 GTO set an auction record selling for over 38 million, proving that like paintings, people will pay a high price for a car with a serious heritage. 38 million doesn't remotely compare to the most expensive painting ever sold, Da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi. This masterwork sold for over $450 million last year. Will we ever see a Ferrari go for that much? It's possible, but I'd give it a few hundred years. Salvatore Mundi was painted over five centuries ago. But just because something is rare and expensive doesn't make it art, does it? Mm. Not really. Collectors might treat their cars like frescoes, but that's not a good enough justification to call cars art. Not yet. So if the ideas of functional art and collectability let the car flirt with artistry, then there's one aspect about them that I think really pushes the car into real art territory, and that's emotion. Art has always been about conveying the human experience and expressing it through different mediums. The first art drawn in caves was an expression of what early man was experiencing. I think that in an expressionist sense, cars might be the ultimate art piece. Yeah, they're functional, but like Bauhaus taught us, function can and should 
have form. Just look at your favorite car. What do you feel when you see it? Is it a Ferrari? Hell, is it red? That evokes an emotion. It might be lust, it might be love. Maybe it's something else that's indescribable. And in Ferrari's case, that's exactly what they want you to feel when you see one of their cars. Oh, but Nolan, a Ferrari can't be art because a company made it. There's no single artist. Bullshit. Tons of artists had assistants that helped them produce their work. Andy Warhol did it, and that pretty much makes it okay. So the expressionists thought that art is anything that makes you feel. And the Bauhaus guys believed that things that did a job could also be art. That's a car. Remember to hit that subscribe button. The more subscribers we get, the more cool stuff we get to make with you. You're the reason we do this. And sincerely, thank you for the support. So what do you think? Are cars art? What do you think is the most beautiful car in the world? I like the Alfa Romeo Stradale 33 and Ferrari 330 P4. Those Le Mans cars are pretty sweet. If you want to know more about beautiful cars, check out this episode of Up to Speed and check out this episode of The Bestest because Tony is a cool guy. Follow Donut Media on Instagram at Donut Media and follow me on Instagram. Instagram at Nolan J. Sykes. Wear a seatbelt. Thanks for watching.